everyone, welcome to Blue Abroad, and today we've got another uh, player review for 2020 um, for the Carlton Football Club, as we've been doing all off-season. Um, now that the trade period's over, we're going to have these running pretty much daily to this point up until uh, up until when December the December training block starts up again. So today um, we're gonna we're gonna kick it off again with Lockie Plowman. Um, the number 20, and what a year he had. He, he continued on from his, his best and fairest top three 2019, which came as a surprise to me last year, I'm not going to lie. Um, I thought Plough last year was pretty inconsistent at times. Um, I thought his ball use was very questionable. His decision-making was questionable coming out of defence. Uh, but he did string together a, a really good block of games towards the end of 2019 and evidently took that form and ran with it in 2020. Um, he became a cornerstone of that defense as that lockdown defender on some of the op like some of the, the competition's best small forwards week in, week out, just hammering them out, hammering them out and and not only getting the assignments, but actually getting them done every single week, just nullifying guys like Nat Fife and Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody and Cam Zerha, and Robbie Gray, other than that uh unfortunate kick after the siren. But he he just did it week in week out, and and you you can see the progression from where he's come from. So he's played over a hundred games for us now. He's re he's really really consistent with his body. He had a concussion last year. That's probably the the biggest block of games that he missed in his career to date from from memory. Um, he only missed one game this year, uh, and and he's he's just someone that's that's becoming super super reliable in that back six, like Weidering and like Jones. But I think he goes relatively unheralded especially and i think this season he started to get the recognition that he probably deserves um from not just not just people at carlton but outside of carlton looking in um for me it was his most complete season to date and i think i think we, we could probably all agree to that i don't think he's going to finish top three again in the best and fairest though so it shows it shows where the team's progressed to around him in 2020 that you know he went he went another step he he took that leap to become that defender that we need him to be, but and, and ultimately didn't regress, but we probably won't see him in top three again on the best and fairest night. I'd be surprised. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. But um, yeah, look, throughout the season, put together a, 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 a super consistent season. Um, averaged around 10 disposals, had around four spoils a game. Uh, had around four contested defensive one-on-one -on -one contests per game and only lost one and a half of those. So you're looking at, you know, you're looking at around a 30% uh, loss rate, which isn't too bad considering the quality of opponent that he was that he was dealing with each week. And um, Dale Amos said after his 100th game that he, he's so no fuss about what he gets given, the assignments that he gets given, you know. One week it's Jaden Stevenson, the next week it's Nat Fife. We're talking about some of the competition's best forwards uh in that mold that that he that he gets the assignment on and um and he, he seems really really he seems really low-key about it he seems completely no fuss um and genuinely gets the job done like so consistently that he's for me his best game probably came against north melbourne it was his most complete um he had he had 18 disposals uh, he led the game in intercept possessions with nine had a, a, a huge amount of spoils just played his role to a T, had five rebound 50. So it's not just it's not just a lockdown role. I know that's been spoken uh, uh, spoken about a lot around his, his lockdown ability and the way that he's progressed in that. But he showed this year what he showed at under 18 level where his kicking his, and his decision-making actually came into play. Um, and he hurt teams on the counter. He hurt teams in rebounds. So if he had an intercept mark, he'd go. It'd be a handball, it'd be a kick that would release someone and, and we'd just go from there and you'd see that you'd see that rush forward, especially earlier on in the season. So it, he's been somewhat of a whipping boy at times for Carlton fans. For me in particular, I I always used to get super frustrated with, with Plowman's output um, in the early days and even up until, like I said, halfway through last year. But this year he showed why we brought him to the club. He showed what he's going to give the club for so many more years. He's only 26 years of age. So, you know, he signed a three-year contract extension. We can expect more of the same, hoping his body holds up as it has to this point because it's been super consistent. And, um, yeah, guys, let me know what you think about Plowman's season. I think it was, I think it was like I've said many times already, I think it was his most complete and consistent season to date. If he can do that again next year and take further steps to improve in some areas and just keep improving in that lockdown role, 
he, he's going to be massive for us if we want to play finals and if we want to actually have an impact in finals because he is that finals defender where he can get the job done on a forward and he can do that man he's got that man marking ability so let me know in the comments what you guys think um, and, and what you think Plowman's going to give us in 2021.